her insights, uh, some of her insights, how to navigate uh, the GeoGebra um, GeoGebra resources. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Laura, now it's uh, your floor. You are muted, Laura. Okay. All right. So first I want to start by saying thanks to everybody that shared before, Robin, Tim, and Samantha, Steve, and Ed, for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Sometimes when you look at something and you've never seen it before, it's really scary. <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. So thank you for giving us hand-holding and walking us into this world gently. So... This is the teacher's guide to GeoGebra. So just a little about me, I graduated with my associates years ago and then from FAU 2013 with a double major. And I'm currently a master's in teaching math student. And I'm excited to be graduating this summer, but what? <laughs> so, I've been in the education um, in the education arena for over 20 years. I've been a tutor, I've been an SI leader, and I've been a teacher. These two are my first students. They are my own children, which I homeschooled when they were elementary age and middle school age. So today, I want to give you an introduction into and also review of the existing GeoGebra applets. So GeoGebra has applets for statistics, arithmetic, geometry, functions, algebra, probability, trigonometry, calculus, liberal arts, math, and so much more, not only math. There are, there are sight word applets. Or, I mean, if you can think of it, it's there. So of the resources available, there are resources with videos, there's open middle resources. We've learned, we heard about that earlier. There are collaboratory resources. So books that people have come together to make, applets that people have come together to make, books and games, animated resources, interactive resources. And, to, and then today we also learned about group work and the classroom's resource. And also, Rob talked about illustrative math. math. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of tools that we have available to us as teachers. So I hope, my goal and my hope for you is that I will give you a glimpse into what's available. This, like um, Cassia said earlier, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The, by no means am I telling you of the bulk of what's available, just so that you'll get a, a taste for what's there. I would like to inspire you to include these amazing resources in your lesson plans and to encourage you to create collaborative lessons with GeoGebra that enrich the students' learning. It's been mentioned before, gone are the days of giving kids a piece of paper and a pencil and having them do math. And this resource allows us an option for doing something other than that. So GeoGebra applets can be used as an introduction. So we're going to take a look. So this is an applet. And this applet shows how the area of a circle can be related to something they've already seen before, which is the area of a rectangle. And I love visuals because kids have a hard time, kids, even high schoolers, college age students have a hard time seeing what you're talking about when you teach them math. And so this allows us to give them a visual representation of what we're trying. I'm, I'm sorry to stop you, Laura, just for a second, but sure. we do not see your screen. Uh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Please share your screen with us. Okay. Why can't I see it? Okay, better? It's coming up, yeah. Okay, thank you. It was hiding, okay. 
So this applet, it gives us the, a circle and then it shows us how we can compare the area of the circle, the formula, the pi r squared to the rectangular representation of that formula, r being one side of the rectangle and pi r being the other. We can then break this, this circle into smaller pieces. And the smaller the pieces get, the more accurate the estimation of our area becomes. And the more, um, more it represents the true area of our circle in a rectangular shape. I like this applet because in calculus, we have the same thinking. So students do Riemann sums and um, finding the area under the curve and like making delta x equals zero. And this is a really nice introduction into that thinking process without them having to be responsible for it. Okay, here's another applet that I like for introduction. When you're teaching students about things that they have to imagine, if they can see it, it's so much easier. And this applet makes seeing that these angles out of 180 so simple. Like that totally makes sense. So the applets available in GeoGebra can be used as introductory resources. In addition to that, we can use them for review. So let's assume that you've already given the lesson on finding the area of a triangle, but you want to kind of go over that again with the students. So this is a really nice applet teaching them how to remember how to find height and then apply one half base times height. So it allows us to allows them to practice drawing the height. And it takes some imagination on their part, but it'll kind of reinforce something that they've already been taught. And then coming down here, we then this question asks them to determine of these triangles, which of them have the area required. So this is eight square units. So this is good. And we've learned how to incorporate these into our own classroom lessons. If we wanted to create a Google Classroom out of these, my goal is just to show you what's there. And then you can choose how you want to use it. How's it? What do you think? So next I have Riemann sums as an activity. So this Again, I talked about with a circle, when we break the circle pieces into smaller and smaller pieces, we get a more accurate area. And that can definitely be reapplied here with Riemann sums. We find upper and lower area and the true area is somewhere in between those. This is what a calc one. And with the students being able to manipulate the size of the rectangles by how, how many N is, how many pieces that you break it into, this allows us to only see the top, only see the bottom. And this is something that's kind of hard for students to mentally imagine because it's new. It was hard for me. So I'm assuming that students will have the same ease I had when I teach. And then now we can look for the true area, which gives us, so down here when we have the upper sum, we take that away, we, the lower sum gives us the actual area related to those. And the upper gives us the upper area related to the upper sums. So, I mean, the awesome thing about these applets is we can play with them all day long and we can figure out what we like about them, how we can best use them. Okay. Finally, we can use the applets for assessments. And we've seen that in some of the other presenters activities. So here's one that I really like. So I have to admit, I never liked statistics. It was always really confusing for me, still is to this day. But this applet makes one aspect of statistics so clear. It's just so neat and clean and clear. And so we can ask students to go in here 
and we can say, okay, you want your minimum at a certain standard deviation maximum and have them determine the area. And we know that learning this, um, the normal distribution curve is just something they have to kind of know, but it gives them some exposure to be able to understand and kind of play with how these different areas are formed and discovered. Like I said, GeoGebra has like every, like every level. If you can think of it, there's an applet in GeoGebra for it. So this is for elementary, middle school when you're working with protractors. I really like this one. <laughs> It's really fun. So we can take this and we can work with our protractor to learn how to figure out how to find angles with our tool. So we rotate this. And then that allows us, our angle is going to be over here. So let's see, right there. And so then we put that angle in, which would be 170. And there we go. And there we go. And then they can do another one. So some strategies, some other strategies for using George for applets, we can look by topic. So if you up here, we have this kind of web of things happening. And the topic I chose was um, the topics available for trig would be unit circle, Pythagoras, trig functions, triangles. We can use, we can look for applets by subject. So I was at trig before, but if I go back to this, this uh, parent link, that gives us specific subjects that we can look in. We can say, well, I want to find something in statistics. And these are all the different applets, the different topics under statistics that we can use to find applets. We can just play. My goal really is to encourage you to just play with GeoGebra and get in there and be curious and like click on things like a little kid, they touch and click and play and stuff to go in there and really just have fun trying to figure things out. We can also look for applets by author. So let's say that you That you saw, like I've looked before and I've seen this name. Oh, I've seen that name before. So I can click on his name and look and see which applets he has available and go and then, and we've seen some amazing creators say, we have Tim Brzezinski with us and Steve and like, I mean, all the presenters here have made their own applets. I've made some too, but I don't feel nearly qualified to include mine with theirs. But be curious, you know, look in at what's there and, you know, like a little kid, get in there and touch things and play with things and see what's available. So I have a, a, one of each applet from specific, but I think I only have time for one of these. So I'm going to go through real quick and just show you. So when you're using applets, you want to have a mindset of how can I use this in the classroom? And of course, as teachers, that's what we do. So then this is an amazing applet that I actually really love. One awesome thing about this applet is that in the bottom, we have a video here that allows, gives us some kind of like instruction on how to use the applet. Then we can come up here and we can actually use the applet. So this applet lets us, so it says intuitive der derivative of this curve. We're intuitively deriving the derivative here. And so we move these white buttons up and down to get the slope of the curve at that point. Because I remember when I was a student, this was so confusing. Why is a derivative of a third degree of parabola? I don't know, it didn't make sense to me, but this is a nice visual way of seeing that. And then we can connect and make an approximation of the graph that we created by finding the slopes of our lines there. And then this allows us to check our answers. 
And we can see that that's exactly what we get when we manipulate the slopes of our original curve. It gives us a derivative. So the thing that I love about this resource is it's a great resource for a difficult subject. Calculus is not easy. That's why a lot of people don't take it. It allows students to learn by manipulation. It allows students to see the concept clearly. A video is available for clear instruction. It allows students to change the graph for more practice. So we can come down here and I can come and move these around and make a new curve if I wanted. And then do it again with a different curve. So what you'll need to do with this applet in any applet you choose, you're going to have to kind of think this, what do I need to do for my students? is that you'll have to show the students how to use the applet tools. And there, you might want to create some specific scenarios for the students as a guided practice. So, you know, and we were showed how to do that earlier by creating activities or classroom activities, different things that we can do for our students to give them practice with these. So, that's it. That's my time. My goal, honestly, is just to encourage you to be bold, be inquisitive, and to be brave, and to look at what's available in GeoGebra, because there's so much there, and there's so much, oh my goodness, sorry. There's Wonderful. so much there. Yeah. Thank you be, so much, yes. uh, Laura. Thank Don't you so be shy. Much. <laughs> Click around, touch everything like a little kid. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you very much for your presentation.